Today we are going to begin installation of a Trio 2-axis autopilot in this 1977 Grumman Cheetah. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So as we said in our intro, we're going to be doing a Trio autopilot install, removing the old equipment. We're going to be breaking it into three different parts so you'll be able to see all the different pieces. So part one will be removing the old equipment. Part two will be all the wiring. Part three will be finished up with the uh, flight testing. So stay tuned for some more fun. First thing we will do is make sure we have the equipment. So, in addition to this equipment, I create a binder for each aircraft that shows all the paperwork, the instructions, and wiring diagrams. Next thing we'll do is verify we have the equipment, but before we do that, we are going to open up the aircraft. So, in this aircraft, it's equipped with a Century One auto, a single axis autopilot a Garmin 430 WASP GPS and a Terra 230D audio panel. We also have um, Grigori grips which we will modify to add the disconnect switch on the pilot side yoke. So the things we're going to remove in here per the STC and per experience are the glare shield, the front seats, the pilot side rear uh, side panel, I'm sorry, the co-pilot side side panel, the center console plastic, the rear seat bottom, the rear seat backs, the tunnel cover, and then we should be prepared to remove the auto the existing autopilot and then begin the installation of the new Trio 2-axis autopilot which the servos will live under the rear seat in the quote-unquote hellhole. Front seats out. Good time to examine for any kind of blockages in your drainage holes. Uh, Good vacuuming, but we'll get to that after we're done. Next step is remove rear seat. When removing the front seats, this is a handy tool. Uh, it's a socket that you can buy online that has the slotted screwdriver um, epoxied in place. And nice thing is you can go through the access holes in the bottom of the seat to get to the get to the clevis bolts locks in and good to go you can do it with one hand makes my front seat removal much much easier to remove the rear seat to get to the access to where the servos are going you remove the seat backs which is a simple slide up disconnect the snaps and remove then we're going to remove the seat bottom by removing two bolts on this bracket two bolts on this bracket underneath the carpet and then with a 3 8 inch socket, we're going to remove this bolt and hold the pivot with a 3 quarter inch wrench.
as you can see, I'm missing a washer on one of these bolts. We'll do that for this side as well, and then we'll move on to the pivot bracket. So as you can see, I have the 7 8 and a 7 6 7 8 and a 3 8 to take this apart. And the routine is to hold the big one and remove the 3 8. Once I get that out, I'll take you to the next step. So to remove the tunnel here, we've got a couple screws and every plane somewhat a little different with the uh, modifications of the interior over the years. On this particular plane, I have two screws here, two screws in the top rear of the tunnel and back, which I've already pulled out. So we've got one there, one there. And then on the floor, we also have several number fours attaching it into the honeycomb floor. So we pull those out and then gently remove it. In this case, as I remove my tunnel, you'll notice that my inner headset jacks are mounted into the tunnel. So as I remove this, there's enough service loop that I can flip it forward and I will remove these jacks and take the tunnel out of the plane because it will just be in our way. With the tunnel removed, now you can see you have access to the aileron turnbuckles, front and back, uh, for tensions, your elevator, and your rudder cables. Before we actually get into the install, we're going to verify all the cable tensions are correct. We're going to verify the uh, control surface travel is correct and we're going to verify center position of control surfaces. In order to remove the existing Century 1 system and allow access to run the servo harnesses down the center, which we're not going to do, we're going to run our servo harness down the side and along the sidewall because there's such an excessive amount of cable we're going to try to use some of that up in our wiring but to remove the center console you remove the tunnel first remove screws take this piece of plastic off which exposes this bar then you're going to take the screws out of this top center you're going to take the fuel selector arrow off or handle off, take these four screws out, screws along the sides, and then take the side panels off. And what you're going to see is the Century 1 servo is located under here. So we're going to take that all out in one piece uh, so we have a completely uh, good to go harness for reinstallation in another aircraft if need be. Now that the center console is removed, you can see the control cables, also the Century 1 servo on its mounting bracket with the capstan cable captures. You'll also notice that over uh, apparently a year and a half, uh, you accumulate quite a bit of dust and dirt under here. This is a perfect time to clean out under the center console and make sure everything's beautiful. The recommended cable path for the TRIO servo harnesses is to come down the center console in this bundle. Through here, back here, and into the servos. I like to stay away from the cable harness, or the uh, control surface cables. So we're going to route it from the head up underneath the panel, down behind this panel behind this panel into the back and as we do that I'll demonstrate that routing and now you can see with pretty much all the interior stuff out what we're doing so we will route down from the panel follow that brake line come along the back follow this line into the hell hole run back follow the antenna lines and then come back in for each servo. Now you'll notice that on this side I also have the lower 
uh, interior panel off. Uh, we're also installing a pair of um, UAVRX AV30Cs in here, and that gives me access to put the OAT probe out in the bottom of the wing where I like it. Uh, be right next to the JPI OAT probe. But that's where we're at right now, and you'll see I've got the glare shield and eyebrow off. A lot of uh, wiring to clean up in the process. Next in the process, we'll remove the existing Century One autopilot head, servo, and harness, and get ready to install the new two-axis Trio autopilot. We now have the Century One harness uninstalled intact. Uh, the only wires we cut on this were ground at the ring terminal and power at the fuse circuit breaker connection. Uh, you'll also see in order to do this you're gonna have to cut a fair number of zip ties and ties to get this out. But the nice thing is once it's done, you've taken excess weight out of the plane and you also have a harness that can be reinstalled in another aircraft. The next item on the hit parade is to uninstall this servo and servo brackets for the roll control off of the Century One autopilot. Uh, this area will now not be replaced with anything um, so you have a little more room to work up here. Uh, this connection right here is what goes to your main harness on the Century One. Um, for those of you that have a Century One and not doing a Trio, uh, that is the connection that typically I run into the most issues with coming loose and giving erratic autopilot control. Remember as you remove all these items from the previous autopilot, uh, keep them in one spot. You're going to want to weigh them for weight and balance for items removed. Uh, the other thing is with the zip ties you saw, remember those were all securing something to something else. Uh, once we get the new system in, we'll go through and re-secure every wire um, so there's no, nothing loose, nothing that can rattle around interfere with flight controls. Before removing the Century One roll servo, you're going to want to disconnect this bridle from the aileron control cable. Um, pretty straightforward, but you want to make sure that the wraps on the capstan don't come undone because they're a little bit of a pain in the butt to put back in. So this is the Century One servo. I will usually take out these four bolts that will free up the servo to come out and then you'll take the brackets out and then reassemble. And this is what the area looks like once the Century One uh, servo is out. So now we're going to pull the control head out. Get, uh, take off, loosen the uh, set screws on both these and then this head will come straight out. Now that we've got the old Century One autopilot out and all the interior out, uh, next step we're going to do in preparation for installing the Trio is to come around and with these rigging tools we're going to verify center position and travels of both the ele elevator and the ailerons and confirm that zero is zero with this control lock in place. This is calibrated specifically for the AA5 and AA1 series. And the first rigging check we're going to do is with the aileron. So we'll utilize this rigging fixture. Uh, right now I have the control lock calibrated elevator lock in. And what that's going to do is lock the elevators in the neutral position. So what we're looking at now is how the tips and the horizontal stabilizer match up right now that looks fantastic I know it said we were going to do uh, ailerons first but since I have that in now and you can see mine lock pretty darn close to dead on to zero so I know my pitch zero is actually at zero 
So now I'm going to go remove the um, control lock off the, the yoke. And while keeping the yokes in a neutral position, I'm going to check the ailerons for travel and for center. So right now I know I'm at center, so without moving, and know that your wing tips are a guide, but not an absolute, as well as your wing root is not really an absolute for uh, gauging your flaps at zero. So what we'll do is put this fixture on this rib and go one rib outside the outboard wing panel which gets it centered in the aileron. I put uh, painter's tape down to protect the, the finish on the aircraft. We'll lay that down, take a look at that. It's pretty good. We might be plus one half degree. Uh, maintenance manual says plus or minus two degrees at neutral. Uh, I like to keep mine actually a little bit up for reduced drag but still within the type certificate and then you can see on the right side we're in the same boat we're right at zero in the neutral position and if we double check the yokes they are centered up so now this one's going to be a little more of a challenge in that while videotaping I'm going to try to check the travel so the up position should be 15 plus or minus 2. Looks like we're right about 16 and a half, so that's beautiful. The down should be 7 and a half uh, plus 2 and a half minus 0, so we are right at 9, so that looks fantastic. This one's in good shape. Now we'll come around and do the left aileron, see what we've got there. Coming back, and all of the rigging adjustments are covered in the maintenance manual. So on the left one, we have 17 up, which is in the limits, and just about 8 down, we're good. Uh, this is something your A&P should be doing, not you. You can double, definitely check it. But the adjustments uh, are definitely an AMP level tweak. Now, when I do a full rigging check and rigging adjustment, I usually allocate about four hours to do the check and adjustments. All the adjustments to the rigging either happen on the wingtips for stops, on the ailerons, or down on these turnbuckles. Um, the outboard forward ones adjust your aileron. Uh, up and down, uh, the combination of the two and or the one directly behind it is what you would adjust your tension with. That's also where you adjust your elevator tension in elevator zero. The next rigging check we're going to do is the elevator rigging check. We've got this fixture that the Grumman Pilots Association created a couple years ago. They're very handy in that they actually show you the limits on the gauge for the uh, AA5 series. So we're going to go and check that. In the maintenance manual, will give you the station number for where it goes. Again, I do put a piece of tape down. I've already checked the zero position on this. So I'm going to set this fixture in place and change hands so we can see what's going on. So our down position is within spec, so we are about uh, 16 and a half down and 23 up. So we're good. Uh, another issue that I'll look for when I do this rigging check is to see if you have a uh, split elevator condition and what I mean by that is when this one is neutral and locked is the other one match it. Uh, some of them came out of the factory slightly off 
you can see mine is maybe just a hair off but good uh, that can be fixed back inside the um, tail cone by uh, reaming and readjusting the torque tube there so we're good on this one now we're going to check the elevator tension which in the maintenance manual is uh, chapter 2731 you'll see up here our elevator tension is 35 plus 0 minus 5 so we're going to go in now and check that remember we got the fixture on the elevator cable and what we'll see is that we are right about 35 okay so then next we're going to go to the aileron turnbuckles or cables and check the tension on those so we're going to pick a spot that's midway between for our tension and that one is reading about 32 to 34. And then we'll go back and verify on in the maintenance manual what that should be. And in the maintenance manual, chapter 2711, we go up to aileron rigging and we'll see that our tension should be 30 plus or minus 2. So 32 puts us right in the range. So our rigging is good to go. We can now begin our install of the Trio Autopilot knowing that all our control surfaces are properly rigged. Next on my hit list, I am going to install the Autopilot Disconnect Pilot Controlled Steering button on this Gregory yoke. I'm going to put the button right where my thumb is. The existing button on top is my uh, push to talk for my intercom system. So what I'm going to do is put a hole right there, run the cables out here, or run, run the wires out there, and then patch it into my existing three wire coil, and then uh, tie that into the hood. And here's our finished pilot, uh, autopilot disconnect pilot controlled steering button which runs through this three wire coiled cable comes out here we'll connect this white line to the trio harness for that and that will be done um, also got our uh, autopilot recover button going in right here so tomorrow we'll get into harness and uh, get this bad boy going was also put in our 5 amp circuit breaker for the trio along with a pair of 2 amp circuit breakers for the AV30s which we're putting in at the same time which will go in these two holes. Next on the agenda we're going to prep our harness for installation. What I like to do is trio sends out this awesome harness pre-configured and giving you every possible option what I like to do is straighten it out and then within this bundle the colored bundles I like to remove with a pin extractor the cables that I'm not using and uh, typically what I do is give the customer um, a bag with a wiring or wiring diagram and the uh, cables that are the wires that I've pulled out so if in the future they need to reinstall them they can so that's the next step as you can see from my wiring diagram here I don't know if we're in focus or not but the items that I have ticked are the wires that I'm going to be removing from this harness for this particular install these are items I'm not installing so first step in this open up the back shell so once we have the back shell off, we're going to slide this back, uh, black protector back and pull these pins out of the back using extractor tools. So I will begin that. Once I get a few out, I will show you how I'm doing it. So once we have the back shell off, we're going to slide this back, uh, black protector back 
and pull these pins out of the back using extractor tools. So I will begin that. Once I get a few out, I will show you how I'm doing it. So for extracting these wires from the connector, you use a pin extractor tool. So in this particular case, the size I'm using is the green and white for this gauge wire. The green tool is the insertion tool. The white tool is the extraction tool. Um, not sure what the difference is, but I know they're called out that way. So the trick is, and I prefer to use the, uh, the plastic ones versus the metal ones. It helps me slide in. So you're going to wrap the tool around the wire, slide it into the hole, press into the hole until you feel a good solid click, and then hopefully, while holding the wire and pulling the tool back, you'll see we get the pin coming out without damaging it. Okay, we've got all the wires out that we're not going to use in this installation. We'll bundle those up and put them in a baggie with a wiring diagram give to the owner for future reference or future installation if needed. What you see now is we have our harness with a lot fewer wires that will be coiled back behind the panel. And then our servo runs. So you'll see one servo has black banding on it. It's actually a very, very nice uh, um, harness that they send with this. It speeds things up. Uh, they are a bit long for the Grumman's. Uh, I think uh, one may be 30 feet, the other one may be 20 something feet. Uh, realistically, we could probably get away with 15 feet and uh, still have plenty left. Anyway, next step is to put a, I like to put a baggie on here and tape the, uh, and tape the um, connectors all together as I feed it through, this, through the aircraft um, infrastructure just to protect the pins. So to protect these pins as I'm feeding it through the airframe, I typically like to put the ends in a small plastic bag and wrap them with, uh, I'll say, one round of uh, paper tape. And that just gives it something that it doesn't catch on. So you put those guys in there. Seal up the bag a little bit. Wrap this around several times. Just use a piece of paper tape up on this end to keep it from coming undone and do yourself a favor uh, as you do this at the very end of the paper tape you want to fold it over on itself give yourself a courtesy tab so you can unwrap this once it's through and that's how I like to feed them through the airframe uh, no snags when you get uh, to the other end and ready to pin out the connector for the servos and just take that green tape off, slide the bag off and you're ready to go. So prior to installing the harness in the airframe, I like to uncoil it and you can see we've got quite a long harness here. Uh, if you don't uncoil it prior to sliding it through, it turns into a real chore feeding it around all the corners and nooks and all that fun stuff. And you'll see our pitch servo cabling, which is identified with the black bands, it is uh, probably about five feet longer than our roll servo uh, cabling, which is identified with the red bands, uh, approximately every three feet. And you can see as we get up towards the head unit, D sub connector got all of our interconnect cables that we'll be tying into the airframe. So now we're beginning to route the harness. I prefer to run the harness down the sidewall to utilize a little extra uh, cable length so I don't have as much bundled up. So instead of going down the center console through all these Adele clamps and near the control cables, I route through the panel down the sidewall under the spar, 
back through this little hole in the, this bulkhead back here in the corner back through here take the whole bundle back through this hole coil under the baggage compartment and only bring back to the servos the uh, length of cable that I need now at this stage in the game you're going to want to start securing your harness even if it's only temporary so you can get uh, all the loops and extra lines out so what I'll do is I'll secure it up here as a temporary then I'll secure it down here and what I secure to in this scenario is either uh, to the top of the brake line or in this case where I have a coax running back I'll secure it to that but we want to secure it about every 6 to 12 inches so there's no uh, no play, no vibration, no ugly. So now I'm feeding it back under the baggage compartment to put my big uh, coils of unused cable in. Um, as you can see, it's easier to feed it outside the aircraft uh, and then through the holes. Uh, otherwise, you end up with a big cable snag. The one thing you do want to pay attention to is as you're pulling this pull nice and slow, uh, what you want to avoid is any kinks like this, which will catch on um, your pass-throughs and other things, making it a real pain in the rear to, to pull it through. So now we'll move into the floor underneath the baggage compartment and pull our main run back and decide how much we're sending back through to the servos, which will live right here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes part one of a step-by-step -step install of a Trio Autopilot, removing the old equipment and the wiring issues. Now stay tuned for part two, where we cover putting the servos and all in the hell hole, finishing up the uh, wiring and the bundling, and then finally part three, we will finish up the entire installation, placard it, and then take it for flight checks for calibration. So stay tuned for some more fun. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found all that useful and informative. Thanks for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman. So here are the cute kittens all being quiet on the sofa on this nice cold day. Thought you'd enjoy it, so take a look at these little beauties. They're 8 and 10 months old each.